Hi everybody and welcome to a new video and welcome to Travelling with Russell and today I've made it all the way to a very famous shopping centre. Now this is actually the largest shopping centre in Europe. It's called Avia Park. Uh, we're going to take a walk around, we're going to see how big it really is. Um, I know it's huge because I've been here already before. Uh, having come back to Russia now for about five weeks, I haven't been here yet, so this is my first time coming back here in a, in a couple of years, so we're going to have a walk around. And there's a really cool feature inside, I'll save that till we get in and have a look at it. It's actually a world record feature of the shopping centre. So now if we have a little bit of a spin around here, um, if we can see off in the distance here, this is CSKA Stadium where the uh, Russian um, football league team plays. It's a really cool stadium and it's only walking distance from the shopping center. Um, yeah, it's really a, kind of a unique place if we have a spin around. This is actually the exit from the metro station right here. So it's pretty easy just to walk straight across. And kind of interestingly, these trucks right here, they're filming maybe TV or a movie. I don't think I'm going to get in it, but uh, you can see all the, the trucks and the caravans there. So let's kind of uh, head on inside and you can see how big the shopping center is just by looking at it from here. So this is the largest shopping center in Europe uh, by not by kind of a long way, really. But um, there's actually three of the top 15 shopping centers in Moscow uh, in the Moscow region so this is the biggest one of course there's two others that are just behind it in size so um, let's go and have a look so just as we're walking towards the entrance here um, it's kind of interesting Avia Park or kind of aviation park if you can translate it from Russian to English um, it's actually built on what was an, originally an airfield, so thus Aviation Park or Avia Park. And actually the inside building, which we'll see in a little while, you know, actually kind of looks like the roof of an aerodrome. So it's kind of interesting uh, to see that as well. I'm not sure a lot of people kind of note that kind of uh, reference to Avia Park. So yeah, there's an Ikea here as well. Every shopping center needs an Ikea, right? You've not got enough time to go shopping. And there's an Ikea here as well. And actually, we just look off in the distance. That's CSKA Stadium. Now, it's actually obviously a football stadium or a soccer stadium, if you like, depending on what country you're from. But that's actually a, a kind of business center, uh, which is about 35 or 40 stories high, kind of on one corner of the, the football pitch. So it's pretty unique uh, kind of layout. They've managed to actually uh, fit it in. I also think it looks like the World Cup trophy. I wonder if anyone can kind of note the reference to that, the uh, shape of it. And here is the, uh, I guess, the main reason that I want to come here anyway. And I'm sure you guys are excited to watch it early in the video. So you can all click away and watch another video now. But the Guinness World Record, now obviously it's in Russian. So you don't know what it is, do you? Now this actually opened in 2015. And it's 20.31 meters high. Now let's zoom back a little bit. I guess from here we're not going to be able to. But it's actually the largest cylindrical aquarium in the world and it extends the entire size or the entire height of the shopping center now from here we don't really get a good idea of how big it is but actually those fish in there they're kind of small the small ones going in circles but have a look at the snapper at the back there they are just monstrous now I just asked over here at the information desk and they were laughing at me a little bit because I didn't really have the good uh, pronunciation but they do actually have scuba divers that come and feed the fish but it's not until 4pm 
and it's only 11 a.m. right now, so we came a little bit too early. I don't think I really want to hang around four hours, five hours to see the fish feeding. I should really remember it for another video, I think, but yeah, this place, we'll get up a few levels and have a good look at it, shall we? But it's just huge. Now, according to the staff here, there is just on 500 shops here, or stores, I guess. And the two main ones being Ikea, there's actually a hardware store which is Obi. So if you're watching from Australia, it's equivalent to a Bunnings. I guess an IKEA we all know about around the world. In America, Home Depot would be like Obi. Um, and then there's also Ashan, or as you read it on the sign, Awa. It's Ashan, which is actually a uh, supermarket, which just imagine a, a fairly traditional supermarket where you live, but just double it in size. And that's also in the uh, this shopping center. Now you can actually see this kind of aerodrome roof here now. It's like a huge atrium style roof with a lot of natural light coming in. Now, the shopping center is big, but it's not huge walking wise because it's multi-level. It actually claims to be six stories, but actually the, there's four physical levels that you can walk on. But I guess the overall height of the shopping center, six levels, but Take another look. We're just going to have a good look at this from upstairs in a second. It's very neat and it's huge. So from up here, it really is a, a big uh, aquarium. Actually, from the bottom, it looks massive. I guess once you're up here, it kind of gives a bit of perspective of the whole shopping center um, and how many levels and how big the place is. And I guess that's the kind of thing in Moscow. They like to build their kind of multi-level shopping centers. Um, yeah, so they basically save sort of physical space by building it up. But uh, I'm just holding on here. We're actually on a catwalk that kind of goes over the fourth level here. So I'm actually holding on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but there is, I don't think if you kind of spent a day here, you'd get to go to every store. Um, and actually up on this fourth level here, apart from coffee shops sort of dotted around the place, they have a huge food court here, which is just massive as well. And I came straight up here so we could kind of get an idea of this aquarium. Let's have a look at it from just down here a little bit again. Is that cool or what? I'm sure some people have seen big aquariums before and it's not really anything. But here in Russia, this is the biggest shopping center in Europe or the first biggest, as they kind of point out on their uh, advertising, the first biggest or the biggest. So yeah. And up here on the fourth level, what's a shopping center without an ice skating rink? I think it's sort of, uh, you, you, you need one, right? It's like mandatory. These guys are kind of doing some sort of uh, coaching, I guess. Um, one guy's got his kind of ice uh, hockey gear on and I guess they do kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching. There's a few uh, future Olympians right here. Check that out. Yeah, you always need an ice skating rink just before you go for lunch. Now there is so many, oh, there's Shalma right there, check that out. Um, there are so many different options for food. Now the only thing that kind of scares me when I come to Moscow alone, my wife's not with me today, I uh, came out on my own today, is if I, don't, if I go to somewhere I'm not really used to the spelling of the words, I always end up ordering the wrong food or something I didn't really like or want. What about Gagawa? Chicken Master. So of course we all know KFC, usually the biggest crowds here as well. Uh, McDonald's, Burger King is off in the distance. Yeah, there's a... Uh, so one thing, they do actually have the checkouts here at McDonald's. Everybody, oh this is KFC actually, but uh, the KFC here has the kind of order system here and then you kind of do the pickup. From the numbers, it's much faster. 
and then McDonald's has the same thing. So this is actually midweek as well, so this is a quiet day here, let me tell you. If you came here on a Saturday or a Sunday, you would battle for a table anywhere here to sit down. Okay everybody, so I uh, decided to chicken out and get Burger King or Hungry Jacks as it's known in Australia, Burger King in America and around the world. Um, and I kind of got one of the package deals and it's only 299 rubles which is pretty much about $5.90 Australian, maybe about $5 US. Now, if I was to get this in Australia, it'd be probably $10 or $11. So it's like half price for Burger King here in uh, Russia. And the package is kind of interesting. It comes with a Snickers. Uh, it is a tiny Snickers, like a Snickers stick. Um, so you kind of get that as dessert, I guess. I'm not too sure why. I got two fries. Um, I don't know, normally you get the burger, the fries, and a drink, and then you also got uh, chicken nuggets. So, fries are good. Uh, I should have got ketchup or tomato sauce. They don't include it here like they do in Australia. It's kind of an additional price. So if you get the package, you basically you just get what's in the package. Um, so yeah. I wonder if you guys know, um, for uh, in Australia especially, the, um, when the Olympics were on in 2000 in Sydney, uh, they obviously have Hungry Jacks in Australia, which is the same as Burger King. But for all the tourists that were coming to Sydney, uh, Hungry Jacks didn't want to miss out on the business to, you know, tourists who would go to like a McDonald's or a Subway or a kind of a an American, you know, franchise name. So they renamed all of the Hungry Jacks in the Sydney region or area to Burger King's for a few months so that people knew where to go to eat their burgers. Uh, I wonder if anybody knew that. It's a bit of a uh, kind of a Russell fact or a fun fact, I guess. I think it's kind of an interesting thing. But here in Russia, Burger King is still Burger King. Um, they do have some different names for their burgers, but everything's fairly traditional though. And of course, the shopping center here also has its own cinema. Um, and it's only 17 screen cinema, not very big. <laughs> 17 screen cinema. The actual lobby alone is just huge. Uh, I'd hate to think uh, on, I don't know, on late nights on the weekends how busy it would be. Uh, the coolest thing though, they have the self-checkout for getting your ticket, which is very neat. They could definitely do this in Australia. Basically, it's like a touch screen uh, system. You choose your movie. You can even pick what seat you want to sit in, um, and off you go. And then there's still the concession stand, the traditional popcorn. Yeah, just the lobby alone is huge. 17 screen cinema. So it's a little bit hard to tell from this angle, but this is uh, Ashan. And where we came in the original entrance, that's just downstairs there. And where I was kind of pointing out that it's, think of a supermarket, but twice the size. That's because the actual supermarket has a second level. So it has basically all of the uh, general shopping on the upstairs level right here. I guess you call it general shopping. And then downstairs is all the uh, food uh, and regular groceries downstairs. So it's a huge place, uh, Ashan. You can even spend a few hours just in here alone. It's that big. Um, yeah, it's huge. I really think walking around here, it's uh, so hard to get an idea of how big the place is. Um, I'm up here on level two now. So it's basically one, two, three, four levels like this. And just the shops just keep going. And down here, it's almost echoey. Here's H&M. We all know H&M, I think. This was an Australian H&M. There'll be people almost fighting for things. But here in Moscow, it's not very busy uh, at all. Because it's, well, I guess it's midweek. Um, this is considered a regional shopping center. So, I mean, people do come here really only to shop. They don't generally live in the area and come here because it's just such a big shopping center. Uh, you'll see in my other video the local mini mart super uh, walk around. 
it gives you just a bit better an idea of where people go shopping locally. Uh, generally, if you're going to come here, of course you can come by metro, but carrying your bags home on the bus and the train, you can drive here. There's huge parking stations outside as well. Yeah, it's just hard to get a grasp of how big it is. So you kind of see these sort of lobby areas. You can have another look here from one of the uh, smaller kind of uh, stair towers, I guess. How big. You can see the food court sort of seating up the very top there. Um, this one just ahead of us here is called Hof, which is actually kind of a uh, home goods department store, I guess. You know, similar to like a Myers in Australia. Uh, similar to maybe Dillard's in America. Um, yeah, there's another kind of lobby area here. They've got some uh, kids' car rentals here, these electric cars. Um, yeah, it just goes on and on and on. Now, I have to point out this IKEA here. So, we kind of mentioned it right at the beginning that there's an IKEA in this shopping center. But it's actually kind of unique. It's an IKEA city store. So, it's actually just a one level kind of uh, Ikea but it's really got just all the kind of the best selling items um, it's not the full full layout of store that you'd be used to uh, a lot more sort of smaller stuff uh, you can still order things and pick them up but it's not designed like a normal Ikea it's uh, pretty much where people you'll see some people just walking out right here where you kind of buy things that you can easily just carry in your hand out and off you go but yeah, it's a, uh, I guess you could call it an express Ikea. It's probably the best way to describe it. You walk straight into the kitchen section, which I think is every lady's wish in Australia. You don't have to go to the uh, main part of the store to uh, come in. <laughs> I really do hope you're enjoying this walk around here of Avia Park. And <laughs> I keep repeating myself <laughs> how big it is. I know I keep saying it over and over, but it really is uh, a big place. Uh, it's very interesting. I mean, I work in retail myself, in merchandising, or when I'm on land, or when I'm on the cruise ships in the onboard duty free shops. So coming to retail stores or shopping centers is kind of very interesting for me, just to see how differently or how similar they do it. Um, and actually today is not really a cold day. It's cool, but not cold. It's about eight or nine Celsius. So, but if you come, obviously in winter, great place to come for the day, come shopping, come to have uh, lunch or dinner, go to the movies, um, just sort of uh, hang out for the day, especially when it's cold in winter and it's minus 10 or 20 degrees. Um, yeah, it's uh, just a huge shopping center, sorry for repeating it, and I'm sure you've watched this uh, kind of towards the end now, and you're like, oh, is it gonna, ever going to stop? But this is the whole point of the video is especially uh, if you've watched my other channel uh, I like cruise ships you know that I do detailed walk arounds and how to get to the beaches uh, ship walk arounds so this is a big part of what I do on the channel here so I hope you find it interesting and just a little bit of a snapshot into the life of uh, Russian people and where they where they come shopping you know we're not all queuing up for bread like we think of in the 1980s in the Soviet times it's very much a modern era now and normal shops, normal supermarkets, food on the shelves. Uh, yeah, oh, we're almost back at the beginning here. Let's just spin around and we'll take a look here at the, uh, where we were at the atrium. Oh, the atrium, I guess the main center of the shopping center. You can see how big this roof looks now from here. Can we have a look up? And I really wonder how many Russian people know that this was an aerodrome before. I guess if you live in the area, you may know that, but I'm sure the younger people would not have a kind of clue, maybe. Um, there's now three different airports here in uh, Moscow. So this was originally one of the first airports uh, back in the day. It wasn't so big back then, but it's, uh, you know, now the population is around about 23 to 25 million in Moscow region. So it's a big population. We can't really see, we're just sort of looking down on the couple levels down here. There's Tag Heuer down there, Costa Coffee, Samsung. 
reserved. So there's pretty much every brand you could possibly think of um, in one place. You know, if you're living in sort of a smaller town, you wouldn't have anything like this. And just see how much it just keeps going over here. Uh, again, They're just huge. Now, just as I'm walking out here, uh, I did pass these on the way in as well. I thought I'd just point out, uh, they have some uh, vending machines here. I just find it kind of interesting, the different ones you see in different parts of the world. So this one's actually a COVID-19 uh, test kit vending machine. Uh, so you can get yourself a COVID-19 test kit. And then next to it is actually the mask uh, and gloves vending machine. You can get either separately, 49 rubles for a mask, no, 79 for gloves. Uh, these are kind of expensive compared to what you'd buy them in the store for. Um, but I guess if you need one, you need one. Um, then over here we have kind of like a, a pharmacy one where you can get different pharmaceutical items. Um, pretty much kind of pills different things like that. This one actually has um, contact lenses as well and then the contact lens solution. Uh, so you'd actually let you choose which contact lenses you want, the different strengths. I wonder if anyone's seen a contact lens solution vending machine before. Uh, then there's one here with different imported sodas. Dr. Pepper Energy right there. Um, there's a coffee machine one, which again, 100 rubles for a coffee is a bit much, but I guess if uh, you're on the way out to the car, you grab one. You got the regular candy bars, chips, uh, lots of water. It's interesting, isn't it? The vending machines have more water than soda, which in the rest of the world, it'd be kind of the opposite. And then here's the one where you can get your uh, phone charger and cables and SIM cards as well, believe it or not. So yeah, you've got a lot of choices and a lot of variety of vending machines in Russia. And this is kind of at the uh, at the shopping center. Uh, basically, as we're walking out of Abia Park, I'm just literally walking out. I was just about to do my ending of the video and I thought I'd throw this in there for you as we get towards the end of the video here. You pay for the parking right here as well. <laughs> it's fairly normal, I think, in a lot of shopping centers. I do find it kind of tough though that you've got to pay for parking you know, you're coming to spend money and you still got to pay to come and park the car, so... Alright, so we've come to the end of another adventure uh, shopping here in Russia and checking out the biggest shopping centre in all of Russia and all of Europe, Avia Park. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it's a little bit long, I don't know. We'll see how it edits down. I'm sort of filming this right at the end. I don't sort of film things before and then do it afterwards. I film it in sort of sequence. Um, yeah, I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you think it was a cool video or unique. Um, maybe it's not what you expected, maybe it was. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click subscribe. Hit the bell if you like, you'll find the videos coming quicker to you if you do that. Especially if you kind of have lots of different subscriptions. Yeah, thanks for watching Travelling with Russell. Thanks for coming on another adventure here in Russia with me, here in Moscow. And we're off on another adventure. Okay, bye everybody. Bye.